All right, welcome. You're watching Crank My Chain Two Way TV. I'm your host Dan Kaufman, and we're gonna get rolling here. I see we got Bob in the room. People are filling up. We are down at the Portland Farmers Market. You want a train song? Yeah. How about a bike song? Train song. Okay, we got a dancer. Might as well film him. I hear that train of rum coming around the bend. I ain't seen the sun shining. I don't know when. Yeah, I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps a rolling on down to San Anton. Well, there's no use singing about prison today. Train. This is a bike show. And we're outside, free. So we're having a great time. We are down at the Portland Farmer's Market, South Park Block. There's Reverend Phil, ready to go swimming. Hello, Gray. Coming from the shift list. Jay, Cranky Jay, our co-producer. There's Sherry, taking pictures back at us. <laughs> We've got some special guests today. We're going to talk to some farmers. We're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to do a lot of stuff. We've got, we, we have the computer set up on the lint, the borrowed disco trike. Right now the disco trike is getting powder coated. And uh, well that's a great segue for our, for one of our sponsors. We're going to talk about them right off the bat. Our first sponsor is Brooker's Powder Coating and this is their trike. They're lending it to us while they powder coat the disco trike. And the disco trike is going to be awesome. I can tell you that right now. Um, it is in the shop though. So, but if you need your bicycle powder coated, it's getting tired, it's getting ugly, scratched up, whatever you feel like you want something a little more dope, and you want powder coating, which is like having a plastic coat on your bike, much stronger than paint, and also more environmentally friendly, then you should check out Brooker's Powder Coating at BrookerEnterprises.com. That's BrookerEnterprises.com, and you can find their addresses. They ship from around the world. So you don't just have to be from Portland. If you are in Portland, they're up on Powell Boulevard. And our other sponsor, who's actually here today, is Bike Realtor. <laughs> come, come on over here, Bike Realtor. <laughs> and, uh, Jay, are you on standby? On your mic? And, uh, here's the mic. Here's Hello. The other pole in here. So, uh, Tell us about your ride this weekend. Oh, yes. Um, I will be hosting a um, home tour during the Sunday Parkways event of Homes for Sale in North Portland. We'll be checking out the neighborhoods of Arbor Lodge and Canton and um, checking out some of the sites, including the famous Paul Bunyan statue up in Canton. So it should be a good time. We're fingers crossed for good weather. And by the way, her name's Kirsten. My name is Kirsten, and you can find me on Sunday um, in Arbor Lodge Park, and my website is bikerealtor.com. You can register there or just show up uh, by noon on Sunday at Arbor Lodge. Okay, yeah, and if you have not are not planning on going on the Sunday Parkways, you've got to go. It's going to be a ton of fun. My band, Crank My Chain, is going to be doing the Monsters of Rock ride, so we'll be rocking out. We're bringing, the, we're bringing our sound systems. And uh, we're going to have the Wonder Twins there and their band, Thunder Full Face Rock. The Thunder Twins. Sorry, the Thunder Twins with their Thunder sound system and uh, all their great powered, uh, their powered rides. So uh, they're going to do the sound. We're going to stop and play. We'll have Full Face Riot and their other band. Uh, like, what's the other band? I can't. No, Trash Mountain Bi Boys comes later. But anyway, you're watching Crank My Chain Two-Way TV. The room's just starting to get warmed up. I see people are strolling in here. And uh, Thunder Twin Powers activate. So let's do another pan of the crowd here. Now there's Mark is bending over right now getting his stuff. That, that's Mark. He's leading the, the 
Scott, I'm sorry. He's leading the farmer's market ride. Raphael, Gray, Cranky J, Sherry, and, uh, hi, sir. Ron, yes, from Vancouver, of course. Hey, good to see you. So, Ron, you publish Momentum Magazine, right? Okay, well, so Ron is from Vancouver, B.C. You just got done with Velapalooza, right? Right. And uh, you come down for Pedalpalooza when you can, right? Yeah, this is my fourth year in a row. Well, awesome. It's good to have you here. We're going to do some writing today, but we want to talk to um, Scott real quick about the farmer's market and, uh, and how that can be... Oh, and look, Coach Dan has showed up, and he's got a sound system. Hey, Yo! Happy Wednesday! <laughs> Good to see you. Woohoo! That's right, Crank My Chain Nooner. And we're uh, at the Portland Farmer's Market. We're going to talk to Scott real quick about farmer's markets and why you should go to them, why you should buy from them. So let's uh, grab that. So... How are you involved with, with uh, Farmer's Market? Well, for about the last five or six years, I have been a hardcore Farmer's Market person, getting most of my vegetables and most of my um, goods and supplies at different markets. Is and it expensive? This actually is a misconception. If you compare, well, if you go to a... Safeway or Fred Meyer or any place, you're going to pay roughly the same amount, except in rare cases, there are some farmers that mm -hmm. like to gouge you a little <laughs> bit, which you'll notice mm -hmm. they have a line of three, the mm -hmm. ones that actually do charge you a good price, but like 10 or 20 people. Can eat. you get what you need to eat? I mean, Let's put it this way, at the height of the season the big markets you can get everything and that you need and is it is there an what is the event I mean you're obviously eating good you're eating organic right well, is there let any me explain something you pay the same price at the grocery store uh, I want to ask you a question where did that food come from it could have come who knows where? It could have come from Central America, South America. It could have come from Europe. You have no idea the day that it was picked. As a rule, you buy a tomato or a head of lettuce at the store, you're lucky if it lasts a week and a half before it basically goes bad. You buy it from a farmer. You know that this was picked within no more than two days of when you bought it, and it's going to last two to three weeks for the same price. And depending on the farmer, it's going to taste a lot better than if you buy it at the store. One of the things we're concerned about with on this show is our petroleum footprint. People talk about uh, carbon footprint, but just the petroleum footprint when you buy stuff that's coming from Europe or Argentina, obviously it has a much bigger footprint. What about buying from a local farmer's market? This particular farmer's market, Shemansky, the furthest person that's coming to this market is coming from, I believe, Hood River. Most of them are within a half, within 45 minutes drive. As a rule, these guys are getting up at 4 in the morning, loading up their vans, driving them to the location and unloading them and then taking the stuff home. So their the footprint is really small. And most of these guys try to keep their equipment up, make sure it's running well. What so about this, bicycles? Any of them uh, bring the stuff in a bicycle? I have heard of that. There is actually one of, this is one of the neat benefits with the Portland Farmer's Market. Portland Pedal power will deliver your goods from the market to your place if you want them to. You can actually at every single one of these markets, you can get Portland Pedal Power to deliver your stuff to right to your place. Well, could you introduce yourself once again? 
My name is Scott Batchelor, and I love the farmer's market. And I would. And he's doing the farmer's market ride. You're going to be here for a little while, maybe go to Oak Market, maybe go up to Selwood, depending on if people want to join that ride. I want to offer you and say thank you for doing this ride. Here's some berries. These are from okay. the farmer's market. We got three of these. What are these called again? Uh, this is about a half pint. A I half pint. Got... So we got three, uh, one and a half pints for $5 of fresh blackberries. Um, so, and I want one though. Don't eat them all. <laughs> Did you happen to find any farmers who wanted to come talk to us? They are extremely busy. Extremely busy. busy. I'll tell you what, we're going to get ready to roll. We're going to check, and you're welcome to join us if you want. Um, we're going to check out some hot spots of Petalpalooza today, and we may wind our way over to People's Market, but I don't know if we've got time for that. So let me, uh, let me play a quick song, <clears throat> and then we're going to pack our gear up and get rolling. Thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. All right. All right. Now, just for folks who don't know what's going on, this is part of Petalpalooza. We're out enjoying Petalpalooza, which is a festival of bicycles and bicycling here in Portland, Oregon. It's every June. It's about two weeks or more. And we're downtown Portland, Oregon right now. And I'm going to play just a quick song. This is our theme song. All right, here we go. I was stuck in my car, you were riding your bike. With the two-wheel freedom, you get to go with your life. When I get done with this stinking commute, tell you right now what I'm going to do. Going to get down the bike. Going to do what I like. All right, stroke there, boy. Now I'm riding my bike, and it feels all right. I got my old jeans on, and it don't feel tight. Got the wind on my back and the breeze in my hair. Feels so good, yeah, I don't have a care. Yeah, I'm riding my bike. Did to do what I like. Used to think to go far. You had to have a car, because that's what you are. Yeah, I saw it on TV, even Jan and Dean played it on guitar. But the phone is dead and gone, now we're moving on to a whole nother star. Yeah, I'm really going far, and I don't want the car. All right. All right, you're watching Crank My Chain 2A TV. All right, we're going to load it up, head it on out. We're going to show you some of the special places that are near and dear to Petalpalooza. And we got a sound system, too. Right on. It's a good thing, because the disco track's not so disco today. And we're going to do a disco song for our friend Gray. All right, stay tuned. All right. Oh well. How do you want to do this? Um, go, John, we'll give, give you a little bit of. There's your very own fellow Palooza. Okay. Nice. Wish me cloud. Thank you. These were the ones we used as kind of promotion for the thing. Oh, great. Nice. Thank you. Actually, we could just clip, use the clip to put it right here. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, well, we can tape it up. No, I'm borrowing this one from my other getting powder coated.
check one two 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 twenty two thirty two forty two. Forty two being the answer. And what is the question? Well, quite. How about this? We are here live for two way television for our crankmychain.com in your computer and also uh, possibly in your living room uh, or office place. Dungeon. Uh, dungeon. Warehouse. Wherever topless servant fills need to be for crankmychain.com because we are on uh, our Wednesday nooner where we travel around to different places and we do fantastic bike things. And here at Waterfront Park is a great place to meet up for bikers. It's, you know, you see it's a large, spacious area. It's right off the Hawthorne Bridge. It has a, a very obvious location because you say the, the fountain just north of the Hawthorne Bridge and people tend to find it pretty easily. And it's got a nice uh, traffic light so you can actually cross over NATO, which uh, can be a little hairy at some times. We were talking earlier, like they are closing it down more frequently now, and it's amazing because it can totally change how the space feels when you make it so that it's a little more humane. And uh, coming, speaking of things of closing space to cars, we're going to have our Sunday parkways here in just a few days. That's one of my favorite things to do, is to see all the people who come out of their homes and you know, people who would never, you might never see, you know, and they come in and they decide like, oh, the st streets feel safe because there's no cars. And they just take a walk, they take a stroll, they take a ride, they rollerblade, they do whatever they feel like doing. And uh, communities get a chance to meet each other. And there's like the actual marketplace of ideas is alive when you have people do that kind of thing. Hey, thanks there, coach. Yeah, he's gonna come to Osaka, Dan, coach Dan's favorite rides. He's gonna come to okay. Right, right well, we were gonna do an interview with Ron, right? He's right there. Yeah. There. So, uh, at the moment, we're going to have our friend from uh, Vancouver, BC. Come on, w welcome, everyone give a round of applause to Ron. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, I'm on. doing great. Welcome to Portland. <laughs> oh, it's good to be here. It's uh, but this is my fourth uh, fourth consecutive year coming down for Pedal Palooza. Oh, thank you for bringing it. What have you seen over the years? What have you liked? Oh my God! Uh, well, basically the whole concept of the thing. Um, I mean, lots of uh, interesting rides, lots of people, and uh, the ability of people to generate their own rides. You right. know, rather than being some great organized event, it kind of seems to spring up more or less spontaneously from you know all sorts of people around town. And so you don't end up having to depend on the same people all the time doing, being creative and using all of their organizational strength well I mean there are those people but they're behind the scenes you, you know and they're not the ones responsible for the individual rides so uh, yeah it's a, it's a very kind of democratic way of, uh, of uh, organizing rides and you guys just recently concluded your uh, bicycle summer festival we did indeed we kind of copied pedal palooza with velo palooza <laughs> Very high tech. Right? Pretty uh, exciting. <laughs> no, and it's a beautiful yeah. looking flyer. Yeah, so a we, little memento. So we did a basically a ten day long thing, not as long as Pedal Palooza, but ten days of bike fun, which we did right after our bike to work week. So it was kind of a nice uh, a nice transition from work to fun. Right. And we had about seventy events or so, you know, within that week and uh, and a big wrap up party and it uh, it all came off pretty well. Well that's fantastic. Um how that that all stemmed from bike summer then? Yeah, well, there's, <laughs> there's been a whole history and, and some interesting links between Portland and Vancouver uh, with uh, Bike Summer and, uh, uh, um, and then the Pedal Palooza down in Portland. And then we've picked up uh, uh, that idea. And so we have uh, Velo Palooza now, uh, you know, in Vancouver. And this is the first year of what we uh, hope and expect will be a, uh, uh, an annual event in the same way that Pedal Palooza is in Portland. You know, and it really is the ease of which it to, to create an event. That is just, it's so, so great for new people. Yeah, well, that's uh, one of the reasons why we, we worked with the, the people who uh, created the whole computer program uh, set up for Pedal Palooza in Portland in developing ours. So, you know, we modified it a bit and made it fit our situation. But uh, we kind of now have, a, I think, between the two groups, sort of almost an off-the-shelf uh, Palooza uh, program for anybody who wants to do one. So you're saying that people from other cities could just like 
jump on it and be like, oh, I think that's the kind of event, the kind of software, kind of thing that we could use. Yeah, I think uh, probably needs a little bit more tweaking, but uh, but you know, through the fall, if somebody wanted to uh, to do something next summer, I'm sure if they got in touch with either us or uh, or the Portland folk or both, we'd uh, be able to help them out. How would they get in touch with you if they wanted to do so? Uh, probably if they uh, went to velopalooza.ca, uh, they would uh, be able to get us. Oh, and and shift the bikes. Yeah, so velopalooza.ca or shiftabikes.org, and. Uh, I think we have another guest. We're actually going to another event. Oh, we got another guest. Come on in. Welcome, everyone. Coach Dan, come on down. Hey. Hey, everyone. Hi, Phil. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me in. Good job, Ron. Excellent interview. What's going on? Well, that's the question, man. You were just looking at the calendar. What did you see? Well, what I saw was what I was hoping to get to in the ride later today. The Sprocket Ride, leaving from Da Vinci Middle School at 7 p.m. tonight. Yeah. Sprocket Ride and Dance Party. That sounds pretty fantastic. So then, what are the Sprockets? Uh, Portland's all-female mini bike dance troupe. Our hometown homegirls. And so, if people want to come up for that, they should do what? Well, they need to go find their bike, get on it, yeah. ride on over to Da Vinci Middle School at approximately Northeast 27th and Everett, and uh, put on their pink, there you go. put on their black, get their sparkle on, and try to arrive between 6 and 7. And be ready to dance. And be ready to dance. That sounds pretty fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks so much, Coach. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. Oh, we have any other rides? Yeah. Do we have a, another ride to pimp? There are a ton of other rides, and everyone just needs to get their bike a calendar and check it out. One I'm looking forward to is the World Naked Bike Ride. It just happened. Oh. oh. Is there another one? Oh, I believe there will be one more naked bike ride happening. All right. All right. If you just check the calendar, you'll have all the information there. And, uh, well, speaking of Ron and his hometown of Vancouver, Canada, the ladies from Momentum are having a ride that they are sponsoring. I believe it's on Friday, so I hope to be at that one. Absolutely. Momentum's a pretty amazing magazine. They are a pretty amazing magazine. I, I hear they just opened up a new Portland desk, so they've all got all kinds of great stuff for the cyclists right here in Portland. Fantastic. Well, uh, we should go look and see where that ride's starting from. I think it's just across the river. Maybe we can go over there and check out where that ride's starting from. Real quick. Oh, yep. Wait, one more hey. ride. Yeah. Hey, this Saturday, one of my little ideas is we have such a huge bike seat, plus we also have this incredible food cart pods all over the city. We're going to meet up Saturday at 2 p.m. where the streetcar line comes through uh, the Urban Center at PSU, and we're just going to take off. We're going to hit all the different pods and bring a few dollars and join us and we're going to try to hit some of the downtown pods, the pod on Mississippi on 2 o'clock right after the farmer's market. If you want to show up, there'll be some of us at the market and we'll head out. Sounds fantastic, man. What, what do you got? Come on in, come on in. There actually are women who lead rides too. There are women who lead rides. Uh, it's the Tour to Homes at Sunday Parkways. I will be leading a, a tour of homes for sale uh, in the Kenton and Arbor Lodge neighborhoods. We'll be checking out the neighborhoods, learning about some homes for sale, and it should be a good time. Sounds pretty fantastic. And a great way to check out uh, those kind of like states because if you can bike there, then you can... Exactly. And so it's going to be at noon, starting from Arbor Lodge Park. Look for my Tour de Homes uh, banner in Arbor Lodge Park at noon. Or go to bikerealtor.com and you can pre-register there if you like. Yeah, you pretty pretty fantastic. Find out about all the rides online? Yes. Uh, if you want information about any of these events that are, we've talked about today, you can look at shifttobikes.org where there is a fantastic calendar of events that you can even contribute to. One of the amazing things that Ron and I were talking about is that anyone who wants to can make their own ride. And all it takes is actually thinking up an idea, looking at when you want to have it, and clicking the button. And next thing you know, 
Bicycle Infamy. It's not too late. Man. And it's not too late. There's still several days left. It's only Wednesday and we're doing this till Sunday. So get on it though. All right, let's go to Vera. Oh, on to on to Vera. All right. Are you going to take this or um I got it on standby. All right. Nice work. I have to go. Nice work, man. Yeah, thanks. I have to go. All right. Thanks, man. Crank it up. The park, the park I didn't know where your volume was. <laughs> oh, I had it. I didn't take it off the. My newer ride, tight in the middle. Oh, I've been munching on my. Cool, thanks, Jay. All right. The bike paint job. And they, so they, they just load into it while they're painting. Yeah, this is cool because this one. So he needs, a front, he needs a front rack, too. Are you on? Yeah, right. I guess. I, mean, I think I'm on. I think we're right. good. All right, I don't know whether we're on live or not because everything's packed up. So, uh, Will Hink, you give me a call, or Bob, give me a call if we're down. Uh, or anybody can call me. My number is 503 267. 2862, but I'm going to ride. It'll be hard to talk and ride. we got 10 minutes to go in the show. We're headed across the river to a couple of the super spectacular spots for Pedal Palooza. Let's roll! We're going to go over the Hawthorne Bridge here. Yeah. No. It takes some special stuff. You got to get that surgical tubing and stuff. My son wants to make a water balloon launcher. I don't know if I should have told him about that. It can go a long ways. Two hundred yards. There goes Coach Dan. <clears throat> He's going back to work. and crank my chain two-way TV. We're live in Portland, Oregon. Hey, Rev. Hey, what up, man? 
Whew. This baby doesn't perform as well as my disco track. Get you in shape. I am in shape. <laughs> Chehalis, Washington, where's that? It's uh, between, um, it's just south of, of, of Olympia, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead and take the lead there. We are now under the Markham Bridge, and we're on the east side of Portland. Uh, there's a little bit more biking that goes on on the east side. There's a lot of biking that goes on downtown Portland, but in general, the biking is on the east side because it's flat, easy to ride, lots of amenities, and the streets are in a nice grid system that allow for that better. We're now under the Hawthorne Bridge, heading north, following Reverend Phil. <clears throat> and here is the Portland Fire Department, one of their stations. This one actually has some fire boats. Okay, ref, stop right behind Vera there. So here's Vera Katz. This is the Esplanade. This Esplanade uh, that was help built, Vera Katz kind of spearheaded it, and she's got her bronze right here. And uh, this used to just be, you know, you had freeway right here and nothing. Now, it's a great trail. There's people that jog it and run it. We take the show down here all the time. And uh, a lot of rides ride along here, especially the family rides, you'll see. One of the problems that I do see when we do Pedal Palooza rides along here is that there's so many bikes in a group, there's really not room for people to ride two abreast uh, for so, you know, for huge long lines. So, one of the things that I suggest is riding single file, especially on busy days down here on the Esplanade, which isn't quite as fun, uh, but it's kind of what you got to do because there's just so many people using this area. And one of the arguments a lot of the pundits had for this place was no one's going to use this. It'll just be a hobo highway. You know, uh, it won't be used. The Oregonian said not to use it. All the conservative local radio guys said, no, you shouldn't, we shouldn't build this. We can't afford it. Um, but I can tell you that there's a lot of healthy people. Yeah, we can't not afford to build places like this. Um, and we'd love to see this thing go away because frankly, it's bothering me. It sits here, it makes a lot of noise. You know, I gotta go down here and listen to all this crap. It drives me nuts. Put it underground. You know what? And is it expensive to put this thing underground? I don't give a hell. 
if you if you want to have the you want to be able to drive 65 miles an hour through my city then you pay to go underneath it so i don't have to listen to it and i don't have to see it that's how i feel about it better yet get rid of the cars and replace them with trains and yeah better yet get rid of the cars and replace them with trains oil is running out you human and uh yeah it's true oil is running out it's a big part of what this show is about is showing that there is another way to live and have fun and you do not have to be dependent on cars. We can move away from that and live health, healthy, active, fun lives. Although so, I, I would say that if without, the, uh, without the freeway, we wouldn't have a place to party in the rain. This freeway, this is so, maybe we should kind of head over there real quick. Oh, we got people coming out. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna ride down and come back. Sure, give and a yeah, so. Some of the kids are getting out. I'm gonna be right back. I'm just gonna do a little tour here with the video. Are you gonna run along? Okay. So this is a great place to have a party. This is where the Sprockets dance party often ends up. I don't know about this year, but right here is just what is kind of actually what I think of as a nice view spot for Portland. There's the city right there and people can dance here. And there's so much noise from the freeway that no one ever complains about PA systems and such. And then right up here, if it's raining, people can hang out in there. And again, you can have your PA systems and music and blasts and there's bathrooms. Um, a number of homeless folks camp and live down here. Um, and they usually don't get too upset, you know, when we bring in sound systems. Um, and it's actually, there's a lot of folks who do bicycle repair here. And one of the things you'll notice about Portland is um, a number of the folks who are homeless are now moving towards bikes and bike trailers. So you see a lot less shopping carts. And I think it's a healthier way to go. And it might actually be a way for people to break out of that cycle. Because once you get physically fit, you get mentally fit. And uh, although it's not an easy cycle to break out of. But that's subject for another show. So here's Portland. Petalpalooza is what we're doing, and it is this week, and I think we're coming down to the end of the show. Okay. Great. The people's uh, farmer's they're market. They're having the street party today. Oh, street party too. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. That so, sounds great. So go play. And Bhakti Shop is meeting at 5. Okay. okay. Great. Bhakti Shop Yoga. The Yoga Southeast Ride up oh, at Colonel Sumner. Oh, the Yoga Ride. Oh. oh, that's right up there. And Colonel Summer is one of the total ground zeros for Petalpalooza. It's just up the road a ways here in central southeast Portland. Yeah. And, and we of course have to ride by, you know what, it was right there. The World Naked Bike Ride in fact, happened right over there. Naked people yes. about five days ago let's, riding. Hey, let's go see how clean yeah. they left that. Because right, I've been seeing a lot of stuff, us? just the two of us, so whoever wants to go. Hey, we're, gonna, we're coming back, but we're going to do a quick bop over to where the headquarters was for the World Naked Bike Ride. So anybody wants to come. And then we'll be right back. <clears throat> I'm assuming we're still live because uh, I haven't gotten any phone calls. Let me see. I got one message. Let's see, what was my message? What time was it at? Oh, my dentist. Oh, yes. I have to go see the dentist tomorrow. Lovely. Okay, so. Yeah, we're just going to go a couple blocks. Come along if you want. Okay, so it's a little branch off ride here. Rev, did you do the naked bike ride this year? I did. It was awesome. Sorry about that. Yes, it is. Being able to uh, announce the 
start, actually. Which is kind of... It's a nice thing to be able to do. Yeah. It's like, oh, 10,000 people that should write their mics thank you. So you're like, one minute! Or what did, what, how did you do it? Was that uh, Thunder Twins projection system? No, they don't, they don't do audio. Well, I heard he got a... Uh, oh, a naked ride. This is where the naked ride happened. It looks like it's all closed off. I'll tell you what, this field looks really darn clean. There was a lot of call-outs to the shift list, and that's, by the way, shift2bikes.org, S-H-I, numeral 2bikes.org. And they had a lot of call-out there to get people to come down and clean up afterwards. And I gotta tell you, this is looking pretty clean. I don't even see one script, bubble gum wrapper or anything. So there's the grid that they used for people's bags. Oh. And this area was like a huge geodesic dome. And it was glowing. It had people's bag check and information center. And so people who like knew it volunteers to check in. I mean, we had estimates between like six and thirteen thousand people on the ride. And when you have that many people, it's hard to get an exact count. How many people were in here? Well, that's the thing. According to the clickers, and they had people at the door. They had uh, four clickers total, right? Two on each door, so they would verify each of the clickers. And when they took the averages of the two click of each of the pairings, it averaged to twelve thousand plus inside well, the space. It doesn't make sense to me. It almost seems too small to fit that many people. Gee. Right. Was it just people everywhere here? Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was just And were they uh, naked? We had parties yeah, well, over they, on they, the other or side. Or a lot just, clear? I mean... People would start, you know, they often usually showed up clothed and then they like had their backpack and they throw their clothes in their backpack, give their backpack to the people and then in the dome and then and they ride their bike naked. It's pretty simple, but like it takes a little bit of coordination when it gets to something this size because there's just so right. many people. I actually hear there's permits now and uh, even support from the city. Yeah, I mean, permits is an interesting thing. Like, you don't need a permit to ride your bike naked, but you do need a permit to uh, close off streets and to, like, have little other things. Like, you know, we're going to have a space where we can get naked. You know, apparently that takes, you know, if you're going to get that many people, that takes a little organizing. And about a dozen of uh, some friends, my good friends spent the last six months really working hard to make it happen and I am just just very uh, very impressed that they you want to give so a skilled. shout out to some of those folks sure sure uh, I know Steffi, Steffi Roth mm -hmm. she was fantastic and she's been really on point and taking care of a lot of the detail work that needed to get done to make sure that things went smoothly with the city mm -hmm. also Carl Larson you know we, his liaisoning with the cops made it super efficient uh, Dutch was leading the uh, ride and helped uh, get, a, get a lot of volunteers. We had some like, I don't know, maybe like 200 or so uh, volunteers that were mechanics, medics, or marshals. So like in the ride, if your bike broke down, if you got an injury, if, you know, someone was, was you know, needing to have some PC negotiations or just making sure that the route stayed at the right pacing, like all of these things were, were working together. And then there's um, uh, Matt Pico, and he did a, a whole lot of work on it and so did uh, uh, Steven and those guys like you know finding the space talking to the neighbors making sure everyone is actually you know because we want to be welcoming because everyone's invited that's the, the thing it's like you know this is a, an event for people mm -hmm. and trying to make sure show us that like people need to have space to do things that are you know that what people want to do and being naked is one of those things people like to do actually it feels really great not to be confined buy your clothing because it's kind of uh it clothing is just one of those things it's like you know like it, it, it's fine for what it works for but then it if you feel like you have to wear it then you get into this mindset of what well you know and I, I i'm embarrassed it's like your body's beautiful it is what it is you should accept that move on and you'll feel great another two really good people that managed all the volunteers here were hallie weaver and bacon 
Yes. Hallie did an awesome with job group. with her crew. Hallie, there. so Hallie Weaver and Make it, Megan Sinnott were two also two of the other uh, volunteers. Hallie did a lot of who uh, coordinated volunteers. Yeah, and they had, they made a lot of signage and they uh, they set were up out here working. I saw Ken Sutherland down here. Um, and then the trash cleanup crew, people who <coughs> showed up and like for hours were like, and they scraped this place bones. Well, and that's why we came by to see if they did a good job, and I'd say they did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's There's head back to the river. Left a couple sticks, babe. Yeah, I don't see any garbage. I see yeah. those couple, two or three sticks, but they did two carpets that you see sitting right here. We're actually laying across the go back so we get some, some back up, back up. with people going, ow. So, uh, well, that looks like a nice bike. Fantastic, man. Well, being able to just to see that many people who are so excited. We, now we're worried about a new thing, though. Naked tourism. Who's going to be following these naked dollars that are coming in? We're, we're, we're actually, you know, we're gonna <laughs> naked <spend>. dollars. <laughs> these a commission in order to like verify that, like, you know, that the where's where's the money going and how can we, you know? Well, right. Well, when you're talking about numbers like twelve thousand, that's a significant percentage of the population of Portland, right? Right. Well, that's the thing. We assume that. Obviously, those there are people that are coming in from other places. We met Ron just today, but like, there's all people. Can, you know, people do drive to the bike ride, which is a little bit unfortunate, but you know. Hey, if you got to get here, you got to get here, right? I mean, you're living in Salem or something. Well, there's something to be said for that, but you know, you don't actually have to like drive to come to the naked bike ride. You can have your own naked bike ride. It's a world naked bike ride anywhere that wants to have one can. Right, but there's something about being with 12,000 people, right? Well, I think that the important thing is not the numbers. The, the important thing is not the numbers. The important thing is that the people who are there want to be there and they can express the ideas of, of the ride. Be like, I just want to feel safe in the street. I want to feel comfortable in my community. I want others to feel the same. And uh, So if people in West Lynn want to do this, they should? Of course. I mean, like, and what about the laws? I mean, uh, isn't it illegal? Well, I mean, in the state of Oregon, there's actually very liberal interpretations of uh, the First Amendment. So your constitutional right to expression trumps just about every other right that is out there. So yeah, being naked as a form of political speech, which if you have to be naked to be seen on, you know, if you're on a bicycle and the only way cars actually see you is because you happen to take your clothes off, that's pretty political, I'd say. Mm-hmm. And that's a big part of what the Naked Bike Ride is about, too, is there's a political statement which is uh, that, that we do need to move away from hot fossil fuels towards human power. And, and the statement underlying is, is that we need, is that, is that the humans can be active individuals that use their bodies to get to where they need to go. And by stripping your clothes off, you're showing that ultimately it's the human that's making it happen. Right, it's like there's no, like you're not, you don't have any sort of protection, and it's like, well, there's you're, you're laying yourself bare, right. metaphorically and literally. And when you ride your bicycle, oftentimes, especially the way that the roads have been, uh, in this modern age, have been set up, we're laying ourselves bare as bare as cyclists. No, even if we're wearing helmets and shin pads and elbow pads and, and leathers and whatnot, we're still bare out there. Um, when we have to take on, you know, 2,000 pound metal vehicles that are driving 65 miles an hour. You should tell us sing a song over by the bridge maybe, or right, find a place that's quiet enough where you can do it. All right. I think, yeah, I think, and think of the song right now. I believe so. I think we're still broadcasting. If we're not, let me know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wrap up the show. And I think we'll do it with the Naked Bike Ride song.
Do you mind, Jay? Yeah. You'll just have to kind of make a, a guess. <laughs> All right. Well, you're watching Crank My Chain Two Way TV. We've had a great day today. We're going to wrap up the show. I'm sure it's well after one o'clock. And we're going to we're going to take the show out with this song, which is Naked Bike Ride, which I wrote for the 2006 World Naked Bike Ride. Again, it's part of Pedal Palooza. And this week we're wrapping up Pedal Palooza. Be sure to check out my band, which is Crank My Chain. Oddly enough, we'll be playing be playing at Sunday Parkways and the Multnomah County Bike Fair, which wraps up Pedal Palooza. And uh, so we'll be out there. Hope to join us. We may be able to do a live web stream from that as well. We'll see. So here we go. One for the bus, two for the show. <laughs> we get ready and go kick him. Here we go. Going on a naked bike ride, you won't believe your eyes. Going on a naked bike ride, it's a full moon surprise. Going on a naked bike ride, got the wind blowing through my hair. Going on a naked bike ride, cause it feels so good down there. Gonna do it by day, gonna do it by night Gonna ride our bikes naked to our heart's delight Don't need no diesel, don't need no gas Just a two strong legs and one crash helmet Going on a naked bike ride For my nation's independence Going on a naked bike ride Leaving something for my descendants Going on a naked bike ride It's my patriotic duty Going on a naked bike ride, check out my big green booty. And you may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile. You may ask yourself, well, how did I get here behind this bicycle? Well, just keep in mind that in a car, you're fully clothed. But on a bicycle, you're naked. So we're going to do it by day, going to do it by night, going to ride our bikes naked to our hearts. delight. don't need no diesel, don't need just a two strong legs and one crash helmet. Going on a naked bike ride for my nation's independence. Going on a naked bike ride. Invite all your friends. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for watching Crank My Chain 2 Way TV. I'm going to see how much of that we actually broadcast. And I do appreciate you joining us each week on Wednesday at crankmychain.com. And thank you, Stickam, for making it possible. Thanks to our sponsors, Bike Realtor. Thanks to Rev Phil for co-hosting the show. Cranky Jay for co-producing. I'm Dan Kaufman. And, uh, oh, thanks, bikerealtor.com. We'll see you on Sunday, Multnomah County Bike Fair and Sunday Parkways. Thanks. Well, let's see what we got. We could have just been doing that for the sheer pleasure of it, which yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, right? <laughs> Except for the fact that you're holding a camera. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> oh, I think we are live. Still live. We saw it all. Oh, yep, there's Dan. Rhino Dan, he says he saw it all. That's <laughs> super. So he was on the ride. Dan was on the ride, and then he went to work and was watching from what? That's what this is all about. Scott saw the whole thing. There's Rev. Wave, Rev. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next Wednesday.